together a video. We just recently had the county fair. And uh, if you submitted something and we didn't see it, that's why you're not a part of this video. But uh, we had a lot of people that got a lot of ribbons at the county fair. And before we get started, we're just going to kind of look at the successes of some of our people.
felt that God wasn't calling me to do that anymore, to do something. And, and uh, um, when you read this section of scripture, it doesn't say, do this until you retire. So uh, I'm feeling like God is calling me to do a few other things. Um, the second thing that um, I, we were at the Christian uh, Ed meeting the other night, when uh, it just so happens that members of the mock nominating committee were there, and they were trying to fill those slots. You know, unfortunately, um, a lot of the same names were coming up to those slots. Um, one thing that I want to, to, that I said at the meeting that I want to bring up today is that um, Mike and Kathy are here to equip us, to help us to do ministry. And if you look around, God has blessed our church a lot. And for the ministry that we're getting ready to do, I think that, um, well, God has equipped us and is calling us to do it. So if you would, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear and Father, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to be your people and for how you just overwhelmingly blessed our church. And that we would ask as we go forward, Lord, that, that you would continue to bless us the way you have. Help us to, to listen to your call and to do the things that you would have us do as we go forward, that, that we could be able to carry the gospel not only into our community here, but through the other most parts of the world. And Lord, that with your strength and with your equipping, Lord, that we would be able to do these things. Lord, uh, be with Brother Mike as he brings the message. Help us that we would be attentive and Lord, be open to what he has to say. And Lord, we know that this is your word coming through him. In Jesus' name we pray. Good news, and I got bad news. First of all, the bad news. We got to get through all of this. The second, the good news. We will. And we will do it in a timely manner. Uh, I've been your pastor for three and a half years, and we've never quite had a Sunday like this one. Now, as I look around, there are some people that I knew wouldn't be here today, even though I feel in my heart that today is the day to do this. So for those who couldn't be here today, for those who had to be someplace else uh, other than here in worship with us, you'll probably uh, hear me in weeks to come share snippets again of this message that I'm going to share with you. But God, as Bob has already said, He has really, really blessed us recently. I, I remember in recent years, whenever I first came here, and uh, we had a uh, uh, few kids that we were bussing in, but uh, really didn't have that many young parents here, things of this nature. And in business meetings, you all would ask me questions that, that I, I wasn't quite ready for the answer, but I did tell you, they will come. We've got to put the message of the ministry out there. So with that in mind, I want to talk to you about our ministry, and I want to share with you the various ways that you can plug in whether you are 8, well, there's nobody in here that's 8 right now, whether you're 18 or 85, all right? So I'm going to share some things with you, and I want you to understand that every single great church ministry begins with God. It all begins with God. But as far as your involvement is concerned, every great church ministry begins with prayer. It begins with prayer. Your prayers. Your prayers to God. And your daily prayers to God ought to be important to you because they are important to God. But beyond that, having a great church ministry it is a process. It is a process. God knows how to measure the sincerity of your prayers. Now, that 
that's a scary thought to me. Whenever I go through the process of my prayers, God knows me so well, He knows the days that I am more sincere than others. And God knows how to measure the sincerity of your prayers. And, um, and anyway, I, I'm reminded of a book that uh, was written about Moses and Aaron uh, in the Bible. And, uh, and the title of the book was, Lord, Here I Am, Send Aaron. And, and, and you know, we always want God to send somebody else. We always want God to send somebody else. But I'm here to tell you today that everything that we do, if we are to be a great church before God, we do it together. We socialize together. We study together. We pray together. Uh, I would even share with you that in the area of our prayers, it is okay. I, I, I believe that you pray at home. And, and maybe husbands and wives, uh, uh, perhaps you pray together each and every day. I, I want to assure you that it's okay that whenever the invitation is given on a Sunday morning, if you've got something to pray about that will benefit this church, it's alright for you to grab one of your bro buddies, one of your brothers or sisters in Christ. It's alright to come down here and talk about it. I believe that it would be encouraging to this body of Christ and it will build up the spirit and the fellowship of this group. The sincerity of your prayers is measured now by your willingness to take the next step and get involved. How involved does God want you to be? Just to the best of your ability. He knows what you're capable of doing. He knows what you're not very good at. And He knows what you could become good at with just a little bit of practice. God is not leading you into an area to make you miserable. I don't believe that God ever leads any of His soldiers into defeat. God leads His soldiers, and we are His soldiers. He leads us to victory. And so God can lead you into areas of fellowship and service that you will really, really, really enjoy. Maybe there was a time that you enjoyed great fellowship. I don't get a lot of new people here today. Maybe there was a time that uh, you enjoyed great fellowship with friends at another location. You know what? I I've done the same thing too. I've done the same thing too. And, and uh, uh, a lot of you have laughed with me at how difficult it was for me to get to know you whenever I came here three and a half years ago. It's hard to pastor a church when you're in the middle of the COVID shutdown. I, I, I want to tell you what, sometimes you would call me and I would think, okay, what does that person look like? You, you, you know, but, but for you, maybe it's a different obstacle. Maybe some of you are thinking, you know what, it'll never be like the day whenever I serve at such and such a church. Well, I tell you what, if we will jump in here together and if we will please God, I believe God will please us by sending us the people that we need that you would be comfortable building relationships with. So that being said... The Christians in great churches pray. And we trust God for the outcome. We trust God for the outcome. And so the first step is praying. And then the final process in our response is, is our response to God. We're trusting God. So that's what we're going to talk about today. About 30 years ago, there was a small rural church of about 50 people. And you'd be surprised to know that this church is not too far from here. And, and this church felt the call of God to pray. And as a result of their season of prayer that went actually a couple of years, that little church of 50 began to grow. And evidently, as they were praying, they were saying yes to God. 
as they were praying, they were responding to God step by step. And within a few years, this little church out in the middle of nowhere grew from 50 to well over 500. Now, here's the deal. I don't think that that church was that different from us. The church was surrounded by cornfields, and they even sponsor today some of the same missionaries we do. So, not so different from us. Listen to me. There are things in our ministry that are already better here. Listen. Better is not good enough. We shouldn't be satisfied until we know that we are experiencing God's best for us. We talk about God's best. I believe that God has a best pathway for every individual here. And so if that's the case, God has the best pathway for every single church. We shouldn't be satisfied until we are experiencing God's best. Now, sometimes we may experience God's best spiritually when God's best isn't happening for us physically. So with that in mind, I want to remind you that we were created for something better than this. We were created for something better than living in this physical body that has been marred by sin. Or this physical body that's been marred by dis uh, 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 disabilities as we age. We were created to fulfill God's purpose on earth. And then by fulfilling God's purpose on earth, we can have that hope here on earth knowing we're going to experience God's glory in heaven. Right? But until heaven is our eternal home, as Christians, we work to fulfill our purpose here. Again, every person has a calling. Respond to the call, and you will fulfill your purpose. Let me share some scriptures for today. In Matthew chapter 9, verses 37 and 38, Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Isn't that a great verse? Here we are in the middle of the cornfield. Isn't that a great verse for the cornfields? Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send our workers into his harvest field. So, God is telling us, or Jesus is telling us and telling his disciples that the harvest of God's blessing is right there. All we got to do is go out there and get it. All we have to do is go out into the cornfields and start harvesting. In 1 Corinthians 3, 9, Paul wrote, For we are co-workers in God's service. You, you are God's field. So in other words, you live in God's field. You are God's building. You are what makes this church what it is. And along the way, we are workers together. I have been part of churches to where teenagers built great churches because they took it upon themselves to build a great youth group. I have been in churches to where senior adults have built great senior adult ministries and it impacted the church. I have been in a church to where uh, there was a deacon and a Sunday school teacher who told one of his first young couples to ever come to a young adult class he told them in these daring words, we have nothing to offer you here. Now can you imagine somebody saying, a deacon saying to prospective church members, we have nothing to offer you here. And yet he 
said one more sentence. He said, but if you will hang around for a while, you have everything to offer us. And they did. And as a result of that, some years later, I went to pastor a church where I stayed for 27 years. And whenever I arrived at age 34, I was in the old half of the church. All because of a statement that a man dared to say. He gave a challenge. We have nothing to offer you, but you have everything to offer us. I'll stay right here by your side. Let's build something together. Because we're co-workers together in God's service. So, if you notice number one there on the screen, I just want to ask all of you, all of you who are attending here at Mount Zion, in what ways are you plugged into the ministry of this church? Everyone has a calling to plug in somewhere. Everyone has a calling to plug into the church of Jesus Christ in some form or fashion. Whether it's here or another location, everyone has a calling to plug in. So let me begin with some of the more important questions. Are you a Christian? Uh, let me even be a little bit more direct. If you were to die today, do you know that you would be going to heaven? Well, let me even go a little bit further and become even more direct. If you were to die today, and make your way to heaven, and you're standing there at the gates of heaven, why should God let you in? Tough questions to think about, but it all comes back to that question, are you a Christian? Which takes me to question number two. If you are, have you been baptized? Has your life become a testimony of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. As we demonstrated last week in my sermon, and then through yet another baptism, God has been blessing us with some baptisms lately. Uh, whenever I lower an individual into the water, they are testifying to you that they believe Jesus died on the cross for their sins, that He was buried in a tomb for their sins, and when I raise them up, out of the water. They are celebrating the fact that Jesus rose again for their sins and at the end of their life, they're going to rise again. They've already risen again to a new life. You remember that day, don't you, brother? It was a great day. It was a wonderful day. It was a fun day. And, and we need to have more exciting times like that and, and, and we need to remember what those days felt like. And after you've demonstrated your first testimony, what about your second and your third? What about inviting people to church? What about being an active member of the church? So another question. Do you invest in the ministry of the church? with your financial resources, and with your time? Do you have friends yet in this church? Are you participating in any of our activities or ministries outside of the worship service? Now, if not, have I got a deal for you? <laughs> I've already seen some of you wander around, what are the tables doing here in play? Don't they know it's going to be crowded when we're trying to all run out of here at the same time? And, and, and some of you decided to uh, read them, and, and uh, I saw some of you pick up the papers, and I saw some of you go, not for me. Somebody must.
us to put down a piece of paper that said we were looking for volunteers to clean the toilets or something. I, I don't know. But no, no, it wasn't that. A lot of opportunities are coming up. For example, we are stretching our wings a little bit. We see an age group that wants to be ministered to. We're starting a new growth group class. Some of you call growth group Sunday school. But anyway, a new class during the 9.15 hour. We're targeting people from ages 18 to 30. And we have got a number of people that have indicated a willingness to be a part of that class. Vicki Simpson, sitting right here, is going to be our teacher. And, and it's interesting. I already happen to know that the day before I asked her, uh, that Dana and I asked her to consider this position, the day before, she was praying that God would open up an opportunity for her. So, God moves, doesn't he? And, and, and so that's proof that something big is going to happen. By the way, there is a sign-up sheet straight back in the back. If you fit that age demographic, 18 to 30, you know, a, a lot of that age groups are the ones that couldn't be here today. But I, I do know, I've already heard, many are interested in that class. But there is a sign-up sheet straight back from me. It's the first sign-up sheet uh, uh, going back to the center of the church. Now, there's another thing that we need. Another thing that I want to tell you about, we need new members. There are a lot of you that have been attending for some time, and you're very interested in joining the church, but you want to know more about our ministry. Uh, we don't have a set time for the membership class, but I am ready to lead a membership class. And right next to the sign-up sheet for Vicki's class, there is a sign-up sheet for a membership class. If you want to sign your name and put your phone number, I'll find out the best time. And we will have that class, and we will meet three or four times and go through some things that will let you know about the ministries of our church, and hopefully it will make you excited about what's going on. And as you leave today... Vicki will be back at that table and standing right next to that. Uh, to Vicki will be Kathy. And either one of you of them can help you with that sign-up sheet. And then there's some random things that we need. We need a teacher for during the Sunday school hour that will take care of our preschool kids at 9.15. For an hour. Matter of fact, if we had two or three somebodies... You actually might could alternate and wouldn't have to do it every single week. And in Kids Club, did you see how many kids we sent down today? We sent down several again today. Sent down a whole lot last week. We need more volunteers during the 1030 service. We like to have a rotation of helpers so that you only have to work about once every four to six weeks so that most of the Sundays you are up here in worship time. There's another thing. If we continue to grow in our children's areas, we need to divide up our age groups and have two groups downstairs. So that will require more workers. And that's what growing churches do. That's what great churches do. And then, Bright Path Ministries. Bright Path Ministries for many years. Years ago, it all met on Wednesday night. And then you switch. Some age groups met on Wednesday night. The other groups met on Sunday night. We're going back to where every age group this fall, beginning the Wednesday after Labor Day, all the groups will meet on Wednesday evenings. We've got several reasons for that. Uh, one of the reasons is, overall, it will take less staff and it will be easier to, uh, uh, in our expenses, toward 
food. But there are two teachers, uh, two sets of teachers, teachers and helper. You know, you don't have to have a lot of Bible knowledge to be a helper. You will need Bible knowledge to be a teacher. We need somebody to work with the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. We need somebody to work with the 9th through 12th grade. Uh, uh, Bright Path Ministry is going to go on Wednesday nights from 6 o'clock to 7.05. 65 minutes. It's not a long time. While they're here, they will eat a nice supper. And uh, we need that uh, Diane needs help with the food crew. And, and uh, the leaders of this ministry this year, it will be an executive committee. It will be a, a committee of uh, Ricky Swinehart, uh, Dana Jarvis, Kathy, and myself. Uh, Kathy and I are planning on... Uh, uh, spending our time leading the opening exercise and doing reviews every week with the grade school children, and then we will be floaters after they have their opening exercise. We'll be plugging in in case somebody is sick and don't show up, and we'll be ready to fill in there. Uh, by the way, you're wondering about the curriculum. Easiest curriculum in the world to use. It is put out by uh, Answers in Genesis. And, uh, and, and I want you to know it's some of the best curriculum that you would ever, ever, ever want to look at. So, everybody stop for a second. Take a deep breath. Come on. Now look to the person sitting next to you and say, this sounds pretty important. I hope you mean it. <laughs> I hope you mean it. If you mean it, I'll say I'm almost done. <laughs> okay, here's something else. Let me throw you a curveball. We need audio and video text. Anna needs to step back some. We'd like to have two or three texts so that we can establish a rotation. We'll even train. Now, some computer knowledge is needed, and, and, and you have to be able to pay attention uh, whenever we needed a slide uh, moved or whatever. Uh, if you're tech savvy, I don't care if you're 14. There's stuff, uh, whenever we were in Tennessee, I used 14 and 15 year olds sometimes. But, uh, but anyway, it is a, uh, it's more of a job than you might think, but it's a great opportunity to serve. Uh, if you're interested in something like this, you can see me or Anna or Bob Mort. If you have questions. By the way, I know that Kathy plays the piano. I know that Mike plays the piano. I know that Betty plays the piano. I know that Ainsley plays the trombone, but I don't know what you play. We might have fantastic musicians out here that I know nothing about. We may have something that can play guitar, somebody that can play well. And, and there may be a reason to plug you in from somebody. No, I don't mean air guitar, guys. I mean the real thing. <laughs> but uh, maybe, uh, maybe you can help, or maybe you've got a good singing voice. Uh, maybe there are times that we would need a special and we need to hear you sing, or we might need help leading. There's a paper back there on that first table that you can sign up if you are interested in something like that. We need a new owls director that will maybe quarterly plan events for senior adults. We have an outreach team with, uh, with four subcommittees, social media, welcome, community outreach, and fellowship. Now, the fellowship committee, they're the ones that help plan our dinners, and I can tell you right now, Patty would tell you right now, we need more people on the fellowship committee. We need more people on the fellowship committee. That deals a lot with food. Not eating it, guys. <laughs> Preparing it and getting us ready for dinner 
meetings and things of this nature. There's a place to sign up, or you can talk to Patty Lutton and she'll let me know. And then, one more. You ever wanted to go to Honduras on a mission trip? A lot of people from our church go from time to time, and all of them come back with stories to tell. I don't remember if I told him or not, but Bob, you're going to be standing behind that first table <laughs> back there and helping people sign up for different things. But there's not a sign-up sheet to go to Honduras. Bob and Angie are the big dogs when it comes to that. If you're interested in a mission trip, you need to talk to Bob and Angie. And then, let me share another thing. I have been a pastor in about another three weeks. I will have been a pastor for 44 years. Started pastoring when I was three. <laughs> Thank you for the laughter. <laughs> During the 44 years of me being a pastor, about a dozen individuals have accepted some call to ministry that was at least in part a career. Some have gone into the full-time ministry. Some have gone to the mission field. Uh, some have gone into a large women's ministry and actually became conference speakers. Um, even now, there is a young man attending college that began going to college because he thought he might want to preach one day. And, and uh, I still, to this day, mentor him a little bit. Uh, he made that decision right before we left. And God is still calling people to ministry. Because the church is going to last until Jesus comes back to rescue. So, I've given you a long list. I hope that I have convicted you to be a part of something. Which takes me to my last scripture that I want to share with you. But I want to ask this question before I read the scripture. How can you feel more alive within the body of Christ? I want to remind you the church is about new life. We put a cross up here. We really celebrate the tomb. As General Baptist, we celebrate the fact that the cross is empty. We don't celebrate the fact that Jesus is still on the cross because He's not. We celebrate the fact that the cross is now empty and the tomb is now empty. In Romans chapter 6, verse 11, it says, In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal physical body so that you obey its, easy, uh, its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself as an instrument of righteousness. So I hope today that you're here to offer yourself. You're either offering yourself as an instrument who wants to be saved. You've never accepted Christ as your Savior, but you want to do so today. And if you are already a Christian, where might God be calling you to serve? I want to remind you, look at what God has sent us. And some of you folks 
we have been blessed with your presence the last several months. We are so fortunate to have you. What are we going to do about all of this together? Remember, it begins with prayer, salvation, baptism, church membership, and getting involved in ministry. Getting involved in ministry. I want our musicians to go ahead and be getting in place. I want to share one final story as they get in place. A young man by the name of Keith. Keith's dad was a preacher. Keith even preached sometimes. He had accepted or felt a calling from his dad. He went and he was involved in a small church, and unfortunately, as churches sometimes do, the church had a falling out with some people. And disillusioned and discouraged, Keith and his family left the church. Over a matter of time, they showed up at the church where I pastored in Tennessee. I had met Keith before. I, I knew who he was. He showed up at my church, and he become, he kept coming week after week after week. And finally, he was ready to identify with our church. And so I invited them over to our house. And I was talking with them, and all of a sudden, Keith said something that I had heard many times before. He said, my I'm really interested in being a member of your church. He said, but I, I, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really ready for any responsibilities. I, I, I don't want any obligations. I've been hurt. Uh, I, I just, now, he expected encouraging words from him. And he got them. But at the moment, he didn't think about those words as being encouraging. I said, Keith, until you can see these opportunities to serve as a privilege, I don't need you. And I said, but whenever the idea of serving God becomes a privilege to you, you let me know. And we'll plug you in someplace. So he said, okay. They joined the church. And about six weeks later, they went to our children's church director. And they said, is there any way that we can get in on the rotation for Children's Church? Now, I never heard from them again. But they jumped in the rotation for Children's Church. And every six weeks or so, they were in Children's Church uh, helping to lead. And we decided to do a special series of small groups for a year. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, they signed up to be the host for one of them. And, and it met at their house, and they organized it. And they did that for a year. And then a couple of years later, Keith asked me to step. We were at the church for a function, and he asked me to step into the kitchen for a minute. And he revealed to me that he and his family were moving to the Philippines to be missionaries. Whenever he did his deputation, I went to hear him one time as he was soliciting for funds. And do you know what he called the opportunity? He said, God has given me a privilege. God has given me a privilege. I want to share with you today. God wants to give you the privilege of serving Him in a way 
that will not only build his kingdom and his church, but in a way that will bless your lives. I invite you to do that now. As you leave today, there will be things that you can sign up for if God so lays that upon your heart. But for now, there may just be things that you need to pray about. And, and it's okay to come and pray with other friends if that's what you choose to do. But I'm going to ask that we stand up together. Father God, I pray that you take this message, use it as you would see fit, let your Holy Spirit fall on us now so that we know your direction for our lives. In Christ's name, amen. Let's sing together.